Welcome back to another NCAT movie review. Today we're reviewing Napoleon, a movie that you would think that would be biographical, but is really just a Ridley Scott fanfic movie. And we're gonna discuss if this movie was a masterpiece or a snooze fest. So let's jump into it. The plot of this film is supposed to be a biographical movie based around Napoleon's rise, fall, rise, fall to being the emperor of France. But it pretty much was not that in a way. It, historically accurate wise, all you had to do was read some of the reviews, most of the reviews, most of the comments that this movie was not historically accurate whatsoever. There's multiple depictions in this film where of events that just didn't happen or if they did happen, uh, Ridley Scott probably blew it out of proportion and just went on the fly with it and made it up as he went. It had some decisive moments in Napoleon's career and in Napoleon's uh, military career that you know, created the, the man of who he was. But most of it, I mean, half the movie, three quarters of the movie, is him groveling, literally crawling on the ground like a dog on all fours to his lover, uh, Joanne. Joanne? <laughs> <laughs> Jolly? Jo Josephine. 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 And you say really Scott's making it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Joanne. <laughs> to his lover, jo Josephine. This movie went for way too long, uh, which is weird to say about a movie that's based on such a big heroic person who's got so much, I guess, information out there, so much history, but it really did. The, the film has a really interesting start with the beheading, essentially, of the, of the Queen of France at the time. Essentially, you'd think that that start of the film would give you a crazy sort of inter interesting film with lots of depictions of things that happened during 17, I think it's like 1780, 1790, revolutionary uh, France, but... It pretty much doesn't happen. We have a, a, a very in important battle that happens essentially straight after the opening, which is really cool, really interesting. And then the next two and a half hours or the next hour and a half of the movie is like a, a rom-com between Napoleon and Josephine. That's very good. That's pretty much exactly what it is. When you have Napoleon, who's not depicted the actual historical way he's supposed to be, Ridley Scott's just put in these filler emotions or filler characters of what Napoleon he thinks should be. So Napoleon historically was not depicted as an idiot or bipolar, but I guess because they jumped so much in this film, it kind of made him look like that. One second he was happy and all lovey towards Jos Josephine. And then the next minute he was hating her. It just didn't make any sense of why, bi how bipolar he was, but this film was just all over the shop in terms of pacing. But uh, I mean, in saying that, I, I think that you could sort of tell straight away because Joaquin Phoenix didn't have an accent. So it, it is, I guess if he's not really going too deep into the, into the film of prepping for it or anything like that to try to do a biopic, then you, it, I, I, think, I think that kind of already bases it into what the movie's going to then turn out to be. And I, I'm, cool, I'm cool with like three things, like people who try a shitty accent, people who get the accent perfect, or they don't try at all. And you can kind of see where the movie's going to go just from that solely so it was interesting it was it wasn't a good movie in terms of historical accuracy because a lot of people love it like lo like really love napoleon the guy's the most feared i think him having that type of control over france and him all he cared about was trying to get france back to what it was build it up make it new i guess a fight for peace but when you have yes men telling you it's a fight for peace as well it just puts him more into a hole of what do you think he is? It's like Marco Cirillus having that slave who was telling him, you're just a man. You're just a man trying to keep you centered. But Napoleon didn't have that. That's why it was considered mad, I guess. But the, the thing the movie did good, depiction-wise, was depicting Napoleon as re being really cunning, being really smart, being really uh, level-headed in the fact of he knew what he wanted, where he wanted to get as... So in the, in the start of the movie, I think he's a captain. Then he has a, a tremendous victory in battle in reclaiming some land that was taken by the British. Then he gets uh, a promotion to become a general. Then we see him uh, stage a coup in France and he becomes the fir a first council, which then leads him, there's three of them, and then that leads him to become the emperor of the whole of France. He, he knights himself, kings, um, kings himself. So the depictions of that whole part of him were really good. But Joaquin Phoenix himself, it almost, at points in the film, I literally turned to... Josh and said, I think this is like a piss tag. I think this is like a spoof or something because Joaquin Phoenix was essentially destroying tantrums this whole film. Yeah, he it was it was so odd. The guy was crawling on the ground. He was humming for sex, like just doing weird shit the whole time. Yeah, he's essentially a fucking sex fiend in it. He has he, yeah. he, he has a sex addiction in this in this film. You're supposed to be a, a lover or a fighter. The guy's a fighter and a fucker. Like and he does both. That's like all he cared about in this movie was just 
Josephine and having sex. And, I mean, God, how many times do you want to see Joaquin Phoenix and the lead actress playing Josephine have sex? And it looks so uncomfortable the whole time. The guy's fucking like a rabbit half the time and you're like, why are we watching this? Let's watch the greatest tactician go and do what he does best and kill off everyone. Yeah. Now, following on to that, what this film did really well were the action scenes, except for there's a CGI scene at the very beginning of the film where a cannonball is shot into a horse and it looks like CGI from, I don't know, the first Waterworld. Yeah. It's, it's CGI from Water... It's, it's CGI from like the first ever C- CGI film ever. So I don't know if they like put that in post-production or something. Or I don't know what happened there with that one scene. but And that was sort of like the problem with this movie. There was just so many scenes where you'd be into this movie and then it would take you out of being involved because you're like this acting is awful in a way that like it's sort of comedic for a movie that's meant to be serious about a guy who's you know the greatest tactician of all time or him yeah like we said with the groveling for the sex and everything but the the depictions of the different battles that napoleon and the french army went through against you know austria against russia and eventually prussia you could tell especially in, in some of them that it wasn't cgi and it wasn't special effects it was really like you know, a whole battalion of guys, actors and, and extras on horseback riding or infantry walking into battle, which was really good. And the wide shots, especially in the cinema, were really good, really, really high quality, really Scott type shots for a film. So those parts were really great, but it was just the bits in between that were just boring. Yeah. F- nothing but boring and, and kind of weird. Like we, we got it from the first maybe half an hour from him. Okay, he's in love with Josephine. He's a sex fiend for her, but... Ridley Scott just kept going back to it over and over. It would be like a war scene. Then back to uh, uh, Josephine and Napoleon. Then a war scene. Then back to Josephine and Napoleon. It was just weird. It, it also made him look like a bit of a bitch when he he took over Egypt and then went back just because allegedly Josephine was cheating on him. Like it was... That's not historically accurate, by the way. So that so that was that was also weird from a guy who's a, is a war a war tactician and would the best of them all shouldn't be leaving his men in the lurch for that shit. Especially in back in those times where you would do that, um, it's treason. Yeah, and at the highest. Essentially, you get beheaded or killed for that. Yeah. One good thing I did find about this movie was how amazing the costumes were. Co- so shout out to the costume designer who whoever set all this up for, for the French Revolution. It looked phenomenal. The Britain the Brits look good. Him and his coat are like iconic shots of, of those. There. I want that hat. Yeah. That- I want that cat and I want that coat. It might fit on you. And this man, <laughs> yeah, it would. Yeah, it actually would. That's like, like for like. And this man got friggin' deported to like two islands twice. Still rocking that fit. Yep. He was never not in that fit. Still coming back, still showing the drip. Um, the other things I thought was, was the cinematic shots. I do. I love the background of where they're at the mansions, the old style of like the old marble that they used to have, the old style houses or the chateaus. They were beautiful. The depiction of Moscow in 1795 yeah. before it was burnt down was it was incredible to see. Like it, it's just a shame that places like that were destroyed in wartime because it yeah. would have been amazing to see now. Imagine all the history that's just been knocked over all because of this war. Essentially, because the Russians had so much ego that they didn't want to see <laughs> French people owning it, so they figured if you can't, if we can't have it, you can't have it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. This movie overall. I mean, was was it wasn't that good. People were saying it's masterpiece. I didn't find it like that. I thought at times it was very boring. They'd explained things probably too much that didn't need to be. And the only good thing that we found was how good the scenes were for war. Like his tact- there was one particular scene where he does go to war against the Austrians, and it is phenomenal. You kind of see his first tactic, the first rendition of a pincer move. Incredible to see that, and and how amazing and stoic he was at that point. And then the movie doesn't show that at all. So it switches up, like I was saying before, how bipolar it was. The one thing Take that off. I found interesting about the film as well is when you think about Napoleon, you think about like we've said, this guy who's a great tactician and a great military man, a very stoic, a very courageous man and in the battle in the war times he was now for people who don't know much about napoleon he's shorter in stature he's only five four five five he's depicted as in history which is a shorter in stature man especially for someone who rules the world or rules such a a a strong uh, army that he had and then you see that on the battlefield which is great in these films and then it's when he's off the battlefield with josephine he's just like a shell of himself like we said it it takes you out of it almost it's like Ridley Scott wasn't quite sure what he wanted to, which path he wanted to go down with this film, whether he wanted it to be satire, which I thought it was. I thought it kind of it was, was satire. It had random funny scenes in it that didn't make any sense. It's like, well, why is he? Why is this scene there, and why is he acting like this? Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, I'm probably going to give this movie a rating. Rating wise, I'm probably going to give this movie a 55 percent 
only because of how jumpy it was. I think that it, it was, it could have been good if it was historically accurate, but maybe, I don't know, really didn't see enough to work with. I don't know what the reasoning was, but I, I just didn't see enough to give it higher than 55. It was, it was enjoyable for a bit, but I was also just almost falling asleep in others, which I think didn't make any sense to his character and to the film. So 55 for me is what it is. Yeah, my rating would also be around about a 50, purely because if you're going to do a film called Napoleon and you're going to say it's biographical then you make it biographical you don't make it out like you wanted napoleon to be or what you think he would have done or this and that no there's there's texts there's writings there's historical things that you can touch on to get the right depiction i also think that it was just the most boring movie ever aside from those few battle scenes that were in it that really kept you in it and another thing that you when i rate these films as well is like rewatchability. you would never watch this movie again like it's yeah, you'd probably just watch a documentary on Napoleon, I think, to, to learn about him. So, yeah, I'd probably give it about a 50 for that. Yeah. Anyway, guys, this has been another NCUT Movie Review. Don't forget to like, sub, and comment. Tell us what you think, if you liked it, if you didn't. This is another bit of an NCUT Movie Review. Peace, we out. Peace. And cut.